Good afternoon to you all and welcome to what is very rapidly becoming the closing stages of season three of the Mercedes AMG e-racing competition. It's round eight of nine and after a little mini European tour including the Netherlands, the United Kingdom and Italy, we're back in Germany for the final time this season. My name is James Kirk and as always alongside me it's Mr. Robert Wiesemuller and Rob, uh, one of the most famous tracks of them all when it comes to the, the fatherland Germany. We're at the Nürburgring and we're at the shortened GP circuit. Hello everyone, hello James. Yes, it's the Nürburgring, it's round eight of the championship so we are coming ever closer to the big final event. And yeah, it's the Nürburgring, a classic circuit. Of course, many of you will know it from the Nordschleife, the long version, but this time we're using a very, very short version. You can see it here on the track map. And of course, we're using the car from 2005, the same car with which Gary Peffert won the championship in the DTM in that exact year. We do have one more car to utilize, of course, in season three of the NERC. We've been on a bit of a tour of history. We've been using cars right from the early stages of 1992 and when we head to the red bull ring which as you can see on the calendar there will be in a couple of weeks time on the 23rd of september we're going to have our final change of the season from 2005 a decade into the future uh, to the c63 dtm car of 2015. it has been a brilliant season so far and i'm sure that these final two rounds are going to provide us with some amazing action uh, to boot 11 turns this shortened version of the Grand Prix circuit uh, and it, all, it basically cuts off before the the hairpin section going down the hill then up to Schumacher S. It actually makes for a very nice overtaking opportunity. Speaking of opportunities to overtake though, there is still possibilities when it comes to the driver's standings. Now remember for this season, five people from league play qualify to go through to the live land finale event at the Hockenheim ring. They are joined by one winner from the museum special event, which we covered earlier in the year. That is Tim Heinemann. And after the, uh, after the scenes that we saw in Monza, we do have three confirmed drivers. Kevin Sigi Rebenak coming to his second LAN in two years. The Indonesian, one of the surprise packages of the season, Andika Rama Malana, and Jack Keithley as well, who was in that LAN event with Kevin Sigi Rebenak a year ago. He got very unlucky. He got punted and that saw him lose any chance of taking the overall win. That means there are two spots left up for grabs. Julian Kunzer, who was our early championship protagonist, he's still there on 77 points, but doesn't turn up to the race once again. And then 14 points behind him, you find Andre Santos. Now, mathematically, there are three drivers still who are unqualified who can still qualify themselves. That includes Ben Spunky, Tim Yarshall, and Yaroslav Honzik. Tim Yarshall, he's as good as out of it. He's not here today. Ben Spunky and Yaroslav Honzik, they are both here today, though. And there are a few connotations that we'll go through as this broadcast uh, progresses. And don't worry, there's not too many permutations on that one. Let us look at the driver list, though, just to confirm. Banki and Honzik, realistically, they need to be looking at the very least at a podium here today if they want to try and keep them with a chance of qualifying. You'll notice, though, our one of our joint championship leaders at this point, Kevin C. Rebenak, he is not here, though, Rob. And it does speak volumes, I feel, of the different types of strategies that drivers employ. Tim Heidemann, as soon as he was qualified through the museum event, never saw him again. Kevin Sigi Rebenak, as soon as he's qualified for the event, he's not turned up to this one. I don't think he's going to turn up to the next one. Jack Keatley and Andika Ramalana both have turned up, though. For pride, seemingly with a goal in mind, they want to be number one when it comes to the end of this season. Yes, and that could be a very tight fight between Keatley and Marlana. They are sitting very close on the championship table and of course technically it's enough when you qualified for the final there's nothing to win in the online season alone except the pride and that's what these two are going for if you're watching for the first time if you're <laughs> not sure what everything here is then let me tell you the e-racing competition it's a virtual racing competition a sim racing competition on race room the racing game for pc 
You can join for free if you follow the link in the description on YouTube or click on the race room page which is also in the post on Facebook. And then you can try it out yourself, you can try to qualify for the final event at the Red Bull Ring. And maybe you are one of these 18 lucky drivers that are going to compete here today. We have coming up 10 minutes of qualifying and then a 20 minute race and that's it. And the winner gets 25 points in the championship. It's a big 25 points. I always like to say, even though know, the setting might be virtual, uh, the competition and the racing itself is very real indeed. And let us take you on a lap of this virtual Nürburgring ring then. You pretty much know it off by heart if you are a German fan of motorsport. Through turn one here, on board with actually one of the real drivers in our grid. Gustavo Fregato is the first time he's actually qualified for the MERC ever as he navigates his way through and out of the Mercedes arena. Just goes to show how high the level of competition is here that a Brazilian stock car real life race driver has only now just been able to get in. This is where we cut off then through turn five and up towards what used to be turn 10 is now turn six on this circuit and into the Varsteiner curve. And it's onto this back straight, Rob, of course, where we will see a lot of slipstreaming opportunity uh, going towards the NGK chicane. You have to be brave, but you can make a move work into there. And generally, if you are able to make a move go into going into this corner, once we exit the chicane, generally it is all signed, sealed, no chance of a response. It's then a short burst down to turn 11 and a little bit of a wobble there from Fregato. Unfortunately, we're not going to complete the lap, but you get the idea. It's a shorter version of the circuit, uh, but with plenty of overtaking opportunities for the guys to try and move their way through the field. Yes, it's one of the most exciting circuits, in my opinion, on the calendar. It's a circuit which really has a good flow as a mm. driver as well. And it will be interesting to see who comes out on top. The fastest guy in the practice session and the only guy in the 21s is Jack Keithley once again as we will head into the qualifying session now. So, as Rob has uh, already shared with you, it is 10 minutes on the clock. That is standard. What is not so standard when it comes to racing overall is the nature of how this qualifying session is. If you are new with us, then be wary. Once that timer hits zero, that is it. There is no finishing your last lap that you are on. There is no race to the line to try and be out on track at the perfect moment. So not only do you have space, but the best track conditions as well. Once the 10 minutes is up, that's the qualifying session done and over. So people have to time, their, um, time themselves a little bit earlier than perhaps they would be used to. And we are looking at Jack Keithley as one of the big targets uh, when it comes to people trying to, you know, get over him when it comes to pole position, he is the most successful man when it comes to qualifying in this competition's history. Overall, he's taken eight pole positions over the two seasons that he has been with us, looking to pick up number three of the season to become, undoubtedly, the best of season three. He's going to have strong competition, though, Rob. Uh, Andika Rama Marlana, always a threat again the surprise package of this season but really showing what he can do and we are going to be keeping a bdi out for the likes of yaroslav Honzik and ben spunky as well regardless of form coming into this particular event they need to qualify well if they even want a chance of staying in uh with a shot of that top five and jack keatley the englishman here and just starts his lap he's also the only driver who has won more than one race in the online season he's won two races actually it's been extremely tight this year, extremely uh, close battles at the front of the field. We've seen a lot of different winners. Maybe we'll see a new one because Ben Spunky, the Slovakian, he really would need a victory to make it close to secure his chance of making it to the final event at the Hockenheim ring. It is a stark contrast to last year and it really does go to show how much stronger in depth the grids have been this season. Last year, for reference by the way, if you didn't join us, there were four race winners over the entire season. Uh, Tim Heineman and Jack Keithley took over four victories each, I think. Yeah, Heineman took four, Keith took five. And apart from that, there are only two other race winners, both of which won one race. And that was at the very tail end of the season. Yaroslav Fonzik and Julian Kunzer. This year, we have had, as Rob has mentioned, 
six different race winners in online play. Keith Lee has taken two wins. He's the only man to have taken two wins online. The second of those being at Monza last time out. Tim Heineman, he's taken two wins himself, but one of those was in the museum special offline event, which of course guaranteed him qualification to the land finale at the Hockenheim ring. Time's starting to fly in then. And it is Keith Lee with the early benchmark, a 122.159. But already we're starting to see those guys who, who do need to put in a bit of work today. Showing up strong, Rob. We have Honzik there, only two tenths off. Then Spunky, only six tenths off. The bad news for Spunky is that one of those guys which he can try and overtake, Andre Santos, he's looking strong as well, only three tenths off the pace. Yes, but a great lap by Jaroslav Honzik, who has really found his pace again on race room. He's driving a couple of other competitions as well, not only the Mercedes AMG e-racing competition. And he's been showing a lot of improvement recently. So no surprise to see him here in second place in the qualifying, by far his best performance of the season. I think he was really caught out by just how much quality he was race room over the course of 2017 to 2018. He's been, at best, a lower-end point scorer in wherever he's gone. But something has happened to him in the last two weeks or so. He's won a race. He came second, I think, in the Super Racer, wasn't it? Um, over the course of last week as well. Like, he is in real good form. And what a time to do it as well. As I say, he really needs to finish on the podium. He... Uh, I'd argue he probably does need a race win today if he wants to even have a chance of staying in competitive uh, fashion with the rest of these guys. In fact, best thing for him would be if oh, Santos Hansik. and Bunky as I'm Hansik. sorry to interrupt you, but Jaroslav Honsik yes. just went onto the provisional pole position. I so... wasn't even looking. I was looking further down the order. Wow. He's, he's, out with a, he's out with a mission today, isn't he? Yes. Jaroslav Honsik, what a showing. And once again, at the end of the season, the Czech driver, who's known as Jadir, who has his own YouTube channel where there are a lot of people watching these races too. I'm not sure if he's streaming live now, but very often you can see him streaming these races here live from his perspective. It's, it's quite cool to see. And uh, yeah, he's getting stronger and stronger as the season progresses. This is the beauty of having, uh, of having a, lop a laptop available and having a spare screen available. Um, I don't think he is live streaming, which you know what, if he's deadly serious about trying to qualify, probably the best idea. Because he was at the, uh, the live LAN final last season. It, it has been a real sh shock to all of us just how big his fall from grace has been. He's looking to rectify that now, isn't he? Two thousandths clear of Jack Keithley. We then have in P4, by the way, one of the Zengafenen twins, as we found. And not just brothers, but uh, uh, twins as well. Manuel up there in P4, showing good pace, actually getting past Banky. The rest of the top 10 rounded out by Maulana, Reichel, Hazik, Shihan, and Weiss. And we should talk a little bit about Mikhail Reichel, actually, as well, Rob, because he's someone who is looking to score his first point in the MERC at all today. Yes, he's driving for the Impact Racing team, teammate of Tim Jarschel, who has shown a lot of good performances. But for Michael, he hasn't landed in the points just yet in this season. And at the Nürburgring, it should be a good opportunity for him to get his first points. And the sectors are pretty promising. Oh, but that's a big slide there into the NGK chicane. He could maybe move up into fifth position, but probably not after this mistake. But still looking strong in qualifying session. He's one of the guys who's been a consistent driver in the league but who hasn't scored points yet. Another one is Lucas Buron, who has been in every race of the season so far. Lucas Buron there in the background as Keith Lee takes the pole position mm. back from Honsig. And there were no purple sectors for Keith Lee, so a bit of a surprise to see that sort of improvement as the times are coming in. Maulana now into fourth. Zenga uh, Banky going back ahead of Zengafen in there into P5. Of course, Maulana picking both of them to the post up there in P4. Shihan, the Turkish driver as well, with a pretty decent performance there, going up into P7. So often, though, have we seen Shihan qualify well and then not translate that into a decent race performance. May today be the day when all that changes. 
Just want to refer to a question in the chat as we're still in qualifying. The winner of this competition does not win a car, but he wins the driving experience in AMG sports cars. And last year, Tim Heinemann won the championship and he got a test in the Mercedes AMG GT3. And now he's working on getting a cockpit for the real racing season. So mm. this is sort of, you know, a step on the ladder into real racing as well. Not so much about driving a regular car as potentially making driving racing cars a dream turned into a reality. Of course, there is a lot of work going on behind the scenes, don't get me wrong. But uh, Tim Heineman earned his spot, he earned his chance, and from that chance, he's, he's taken it with both hands. And it'll be fascinating to see whether he wins that again, if Heineman is actually yeah, our two times champion. Santos into second, goes past yes. Honsik here, very nice time, and he does what he needs to do to so secure his pace, secure his place, I want to say, for the final. Buron also in the top 10, and we were just watching Frigotto. Oh, as I just wanted to click to Frigotto, he went over the line and improved, so I missed him. P11 for the real racing driver from Brazil. Hey, look at P10 as well, though. Lucas Bron blotted himself in there. Points, of course, go down from 1st to 10th, and though it is a solitary point, oh, it would feel good for the Czech driver if he did score something here today. And we have to go back to Andre Santos, the Team Euronics driver. He's purple in the first sector, and purple means that's the overall best time. Hazid, meanwhile, into 8th, ahead of Bethel now. Santos goes into the back straight, and that's oh, his qualifying oh, session oh. over. That is a shame, just pushing it too far, never taking the pole position in his... MERC career, Andre Santos, and he won't be taking pole position here today either. In fact, it's looking more and more likely that Jack Heathley is going to be taking his third pole position of the year. Oh, Johannes Weiss as well. He Ooh. was on a personal best, but that's way off the track. He spins back into the pit wall, abandons his qualifying here as we come to an end. And let's see if Ben Spunky can improve. He really needs an improvement, but no, no. he stays in fifth. That is not good news for him. That's not good news at all, especially with Santos up there in first. And I don't see, Rob, anyone else on a particularly good lap, so I think I'm pretty safe in calling it. Jack Keithley takes his third pole position of the season. It is his first since Zandvoort when we began that mini European tour. And he will be on the front row ahead of Andre Santos, who has won a race himself. In fact, he was battling with Jack Keithley for the win in Brands Hatch. It promises to be a fascinating start to this race, though, Rob, especially with Yaroslav Honzik back in the mix. A great P3. And if you want to know who is the favorite for this race and who has a chance for the championship, here you can see the championship standings once again. 25 points for a victory. So that's what's on the line. And especially Ben Spunky, he really needs the points to get ahead of Kunze or Santos in the overall championship. There is, of course, the whole thing of who's going to actually win the points standings come the end of this league play season. Keithy doing a good job to get ahead of Maulana, but who's going to get ahead in the race by the time the checkered flag falls? We have 20 minutes ahead of us here at the Nürburgring. The red lights illuminate above the drivers. The engine revs rise. And the clutches are let loose. We are racing here in Germany for the final time in season three. And it seems to have been a pretty good start there from Jack Keithley, who moves his way nice and clear into first position. All the drivers jostling for position down into this really tight turn one. And all oh, that's really, really uh, wide there from Keithley on exit. Might allow Santos in. No, but tell you who is going to be let in. Yaroslav Onzik, who throws his way up the inside of the Mercedes Arena. Santos, though, around the outside. Better traction. Keeps position for now. Who's had an awful start? You know what? It's that was Han. fallen down to six. And Sheehan as well. All the way back down to P16 there. Uh, Hazik there. He's not had the best of starts. He's down to P10. Buron's had a blind. He's gained two positions up to P8 as we head into turn six and head towards the Vorsteiner curb. For Keithley, it was brilliant. For Santos, it was even better overall. And Ooh. oh, the gravel, the back go, there goes Mikhail Reichel. And after qualifying so well, Rob, it looks like his chances of points have just blown up in smoke. We were talking about it, that he really wants his first point. And it looks like this race, it won't happen once again. 
And it could be the third win of the season for Jack Keefley if he can keep his first position here against Andre Santos for the remaining 18 and a half minutes of this race. It is a long time and certainly at the end of lap one he has not lost him. It is Keefley who leads from Santos Honzik, Banki, Manuel Zengafinen, Andika Ramon Maulan. Julian Zengafanen, Baron, Weiss and Hazik rounding out your top 10. And so once again, actually Malaysian doing well, looking to score more points. As through the Mercedes arena we go once more. Santos, Honzik, watching brief. Bunky will be happy to have moved to fourth, of course. But ideally, in fact, definitely, he needs to be getting past Santos. Probably past Keithley as well to win this race we even have a chance to qualify in that top five Santos he's doing all he needs yes and it looks like the top three are gapping Bunky a little bit as well Ben Spunky who changed his team of course they are they're having their own teams in sim racing as well who's now driving for the Oscaro esports team a French outfit it's not teammates anymore with Jack Keithley so he can expect no help from the Englishman you can certainly expect no help from the Swiss and him either. Manuel's and Gaffin, and he's shown good pace this season. In particular, I remember the Norris ring, he was looking particularly strong. And don't count him out, the podium picture either. But for Ben Spunky, immediately on the defences further back. Johannes Weiss makes his way past Lucas Buron. This battle on the very precipice of the points. Involving four cars, actually. Watch out for Gustavo Fregato as well, our real life Brazilian uh, stock car racing driver down there in P11. Thankfully, no retirements as well. The last of our runners and riders, uh, Mark Balashin down there in P17. is Actually, I noticed Rachel moving his way back up into P15. He looks like a gayer. Uh, the Romanian has moved his way uh, off the circuit, unfortunately. There, a gayer shuffled back down to P17. But where do we see? Oh, oh there's a wide moment there. And who was that? It was Vice. He did all the hard work to go past the Rob. And now he's letting back in the two white cars going side by side. And on exit, I think that Vice might just have saved that position. Oh, Hazik has been hit off. When it looked like this was Frigotto who's gone into the back of Hazik, who was looking to go around the outside of Vice and to run there. And dropped way back the order now. That's a real shame there for, for Hazik. Of course. If you wonder, oh, well, no, you know, is, is there going to be no repercussions? You do have a disciplinary committee, a, a, a few stewards looking at these races afterwards. If penalties need applying, then they will be applied. And trying to apply the pressure now is Yaroslav Honzik, who dives up the inside of the final corner. And on exit, Santos still remains ahead. But Yaroslav Honzik looking to do his best to take E2. He's looking racy. He's looking punchy, Rob. He's looking back on four. Oh, and change for position in the back as well there. Ben Gaffinen and Banky very close together. I think nothing changed in the end. But this could be a tight race here. In the Mercedes Arena, they've really started to gap Ben's Banky behind as well. He's kind of had to stop looking at attacking and more start looking in his rear few mirrors. Because Manuels and Gaffinen continues to pile on the pressure for P4. You know, I'm going to say it flat out, Rob. I think Honzik might very well be the fastest car in these top three. Of course, he does have the slipstream. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Should not forget that. I mean, yeah. with these cars, it's kind of in the middle. You do get the slipstream, but you also get a bit of dirty air because they're very dependent on the aerodynamic in the fast corners. But yeah, Honsik certainly doing a great job. Have a little slide there. You have to watch out with your tires. Even though it's just a 20-minute race, these tires do not last very long. I, I bet he's kind of wishing that he was in the 2015 C63 that served him so well last year. And Gaffinen with a good save there on the exit of the uh, of the NGK chicane. Of course, the 2015 models that we're going to in two weeks' time come fitted with DRS. This is something that these cars, and actually for the majority of the season, people have simply not been able to utilize. As on board Wiz and Gaffin, and we're just looking back here to Maulana, who's actually been, he's been a bit quiet this race, Rob, in all honesty. For someone who's sticking around to try and win the points championship, he's even very quiet, very unlike Maulana. Yeah, maybe he is not taking any unnecessary risks in this race, but usually we see him on the podium. He's been so consistent on the podium this season. I think it was just one race yeah, where he's he was. Five. Yeah. Five podiums. 
It's extremely talented. The Indonesian in the black car. In the car that Mika Hakkinen drove in the DTM season 2005. And yeah, we will see him for sure in Germany at the final. Good to see him. Good to see him make the wave all the way from Indonesia. <laughs> to come Long to way Germany. to go, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And so, 13 minutes left then. And we're starting to have a bit of a story developing. We have the front three. We then have the three outside the podium. We have Julian's and Gaffin on his own. And then we have the three for the final points positions. Well, Weiss and Buron there in P8 and P9 behind. Shajir just trying to hold on to that final point, the Indonesian in P10 with a little slide there. It's got to watch out though, because Emre Sheehan, I noticed, making a recovery after that early lap one incident. He still sees a point and he still might get it. He is a fast driver. But again, Rob, it's the racecraft that is usually let him down. So much good pace thrown out the window when it comes to the race. And we have to watch Lucas Buron here. He's in the car with the green mirrors. And he really wants his first point. And if I were him, maybe I would take it a bit uh, more carefully here. In the first half oh. of the race as he loses it. I cannot believe it. Oh! Comes back onto the track and that's the points gone for Lucas Buron. Commentator's curse in full effect. That was that was instant. <laughs> that that wasn't even any time to settle on thinking, oh wait, what have we done? That was just but it just goes to show Rob that no matter how much downforce you put on these cars, the amount of torque going through those rear wheels is always gonna cause a challenge just further up the order. Banky and Maulana. They were almost exchanging positions because it looks like Banky's been off the tracks and Gaffin and three to four. That's bad news for Banky and it was probably in the Warsteiner curve where he went a little bit wide. We've seen Santos in qualifying making the same mistake on his final attempt. And Banky now one position down and is looking less and less likely that he will keep it open to qualify for the final event. Heading towards half distance then it is still Jack Keithy who leads from Santos and Honzik. That is your podium. That's particularly bad news for Honzik, though, because even if Honzik was to win both races here at the Nürburgring and then in two weeks' time at the Red Bull Ring, he would still be unable to overtake Julian Kunze in the standings, which means the only man that he can do part of from that top five is Andre Santos. And for almost 10 minutes now, Rob, he's been staring at his rear wing. Yeah, but maybe for Honsik, maybe it's about something else. Maybe it's about proving that he can still mix it with the best. Honsik, one of the few drivers who is a little bit older, who's already over 30. I hope uh, I was allowed to say that, Jaroslav. But uh, <laughs> yeah, most of these are rather young guns. I think Keithley and Santos in their mid-20s. We've got a lot of drivers around the age of 20. And Honsik is one of the guys who's a little bit older. And he still shows that he's lost none of his pace. I guess worth mentioning just you know, to, to give you an impression of how widely varied the ages of the drivers are. We've seen someone like uh, the German sim racer uh, Dirk Nutz, who's in his 40s, 50s, his 50s I want to yeah. say. And then you have someone like Tim Yarschel, who, who was in with a chance of qualifying for the top five, not anymore. He's 14. Uh, as uh, well, it, it's amazing. I love the variation. And trying to vary it up now is Andre Santos on the lead. Looking to go for the undercut, then going around the outside of the Mercedes Arena. We've seen great traction through there already from the German. But Jack Keithley, he is a master when it comes to touring cars. He knows exactly where to put his car when he needs it most. And he still holds on to that P1 as further back, actually, I noticed. It seems like Emery Sheehan has moved his way up into the top nine. He's got his way past the Shazir as well. Yeah, someone must have dropped out of the uh, points there, as we see Maulana and Banky also in a very close battle once again. But we will just keep our eyes for one more moment here on Keith Lee, on Santos, and also on Honsik, because Andre Santos is definitely in the window now to make an attack. Towards the NGK chicken we go. Jack Keithley places his car on the inside and then ever so slightly moves it to the middle of the track. Now this is particularly good race car because when you put your car in the middle of the track, you're either asking the guy behind you to really commit there to the inside, as that's a mistake actually from Santos. I only notice now. Not punished by Honza yet. Yeah. When you put your car in the middle of the track, you're committing the driver behind to one of two options. 
chucking it up the inside of which they are almost certainly going to overshoot the corner or chucking it up the outside of which they're not going to be overtaking you unless their traction is supreme. Speaking of supreme traction, that is something that is certainly uh, abundant in Andre Santos's car. He's been able to hold off Onzik despite that slight mistake. Or maybe it's just a Czech driver, again, and trying to prove a point, showing that he can mix things up. He's not looking to push things too far because there have already been so many drivers, Rob, who fall fallen the foul of the track limits here at the Nürburgring. Yes, and I think we, we lost Ayman Hazik out of the top 10. Might have been the car that was hit by... Um by Buron when he re-entered the track, but definitely Hazik was a little bit further up earlier mm -hmm. in this race. And now, of course, we have Chihan instead sitting in the points. He'll be delighted with that. Certainly Johannes Weiss as well, the German at his home circuit. He did have two people to play with initially. Now he's out there on his own looking to score a very nice eight overall. And he's driving for the underdog team, underdog racing. Mm. And that's quite a fitting name because he actually is an underdog in this race and he's holding a couple of very experienced drivers such as Chihan, Oliveira and uh, Hazik as well. <laughs> yeah, Buron as well. Hazik actually has been in the points in the, uh, in the race at Brands Hatch. So yep. good to see Johannes Weiss here with a strong performance in P8. On his debut he scored points, Hazik. He, he, he burst onto the scene. Uh, but unfortunately hasn't really looked to follow it up. But I guess he was a little unfortunate this time around after being hit off by Fregato. Over seven minutes now remaining. And still it remains unchanged up at the front. Further behind though, even though this battle's going on outside the points, it is no less fierce. Mikhail Rakel with a great move up the inside there. Great lay break. He completely caught Oliveira unawares. And now this might be a double overtake. Luke Ron looks to pressure. And no, he's not going to make his way through. Decides that uh, safety is a better part of Valor, especially after losing it earlier in this race. But a great move from Mikhail. And he's only one place away from a point. It's only two seconds as well, Rob. Still possible. Yes, it could happen if someone makes a mistake. And we have to go to Banki. Well, it looked like a position change there, but I think it was just a ping of Maulana. He's racing, of course, from Indonesia. So sometimes it can happen that the timing doesn't pick him up correctly. But Bunky's still under pressure and he's not looking like he can gain any time. Then Gaffinen is just driving away from him. This might be one of the best performances from Manuel's and Gaffinen, honestly. They, they kind of, they, they float in and out of the MERC, the Swiss guys, and I'm, I'm not too sure whether it's more on their pace or more on their schedule. But it's always great to see both of them. And doing well once again is Zen Gaffinen. Trying to do even better though. Is Santos. Here he goes. Oh, again, mistake. All the undercuts. And now he's a mistake from Keithley, most certainly. Loops it a little bit. And then here comes this traction around the outside of the Mercedes Arena. Santos, we've seen him do this before. Is he going to make it sick, though? No, Jack Keithley. Oh, he leaves the breaking late. And he ushers Santos to the outside again. Masterful defending from the Brit. And it could see Honzik capitalize massively into turn five. Honzik around the outside of turn five. This would be a brilliant move if he can pull it off. But no, on exit, it is Santos who holds on once again. It all starts though, Rob, from Jack Keithley. He may be one of the younger guys in the field, but he's also one of the most experienced guys in the field. He knows how to drive a touring car and he wants to pick up his third race win of the season. He wants to pick up this win indeed, but Andre Santos is putting him under all sorts of pressure and Keithley, he had to lean a little bit on Santos there to prevent the overtake. So this is far from over, but only four minutes and 50 seconds left in this race. A second separates our top three. You cannot hope for any closer than that. Onto the home straight for what will be one of the last three, four times of this uh, German legendary circuit. It is Keithley, who again puts his car in the middle of the track. Santos, look how late he breaks. No attempt to go up the end. He goes to the outside, tries to force Keithley into another mistake. It's not going to happen, though. And as we enter the Mercedes arena, is he going to try and throw it up the inside of the exit? No, again, Keithley on the inside. Santos is going to have to get just that little bit more creative, Rob, if he wants to get himself past. And Keithley is slow at the moment. You can see it. You can see how Zangaffanen's car is getting bigger because he's defending in every corner. He tries to back Santos up a little bit so that Santos maybe gets overtaken by Honzik. But Keithley's not on this uh, on the strong pace that he's shown in the beginning of the race anymore, that's for sure. 
almost pushing him around turn six and then heading on to uh, the back slightly curved straight. We're just going to go through uh, turn eight now. As I'm bogging, I keep on... I've got the GP circuit map. I get confused sometimes. I apologize, audience. What we do know is that this is the NGK chicane. And once again, Keithy putting his car on the inside. Once again, Keithy on exit, able to keep it nice and simple. I've got a feeling that it might have to come from a bit of a kamikaze move, Rob, which would see Santos force the initiative and force his way through. Just over three minutes remain. Last year, when we raced at the Nürburgring in the e-racing competition, Keithley and Julian Kunze battled for the victory. Julian Kunze, of course, the teammate of Andre Santos, who's not here in the race today. And they made contact in the final on, the, on the final lap in the NGK chicane, which decided the race win. So let's see what happens this time around. Once again, Santos is forced to play. Ooh, contact! Oh, the contact there! He was forced to play Bride's May. Well, he's well and truly thrown the flowers into the crowd there. Although I think that's a bit nice and happy as a metaphor for that particular occasion. A little tap reminding Keithy, listen, I'm getting impatient now. I want this win, thank you very much. Two and a half minutes remain, so we're going to have this lap. It's going to be very close to the line as to whether we have two or one final lap remaining. Whichever way you choose to say it, Rob, time is running out for the German. Yes, he really needs to get his move on. And uh, I think we will see when they cross the line, but I think there will be two more laps after they've crossed the line. It's looking more and more likely, isn't it? It's a 1 minute 20 to 30 round here. And we've got the better part of two minutes still to go. So, round turn 11. For the third to last time of asking, it is on to the penultimate lap here at round 8 of 9 of the Mercedes-AMG e-racing competition. These top three have been nose to tail all race long. The question is, will we finally see a change in the lead? Into the Mercedes arena we go once again. Santos, not with any sort of purchase on the inside. Keithy just placing his car perfectly. And on exit once again, Santos cannot do anything. He's forced to follow in behind. It's almost like he's trying to rely on a mistake from Keithy. But so rarely do we see the Brit making mistakes. Yes, Keithley has done a wonderful job here defending, always closing the line. And he doesn't seem to be so worried, at least it looks like this from the outside. He's just always keeping the defensive line. We've not seen really any mistakes by him while defending. This is the crucial corner here. This is the corner where Santos needs to get a good run. Because you might be able so. to pass on the outside. Not sure if that's enough to pass on the outside, but it will be close into the NGK chicane. Another man that will be wishing that DRS was on these oh, cars. Contact! Be ever so slightly coming across. That was a little bit over the line from Keithy. That could have ended a lot worse than it did. And now here comes Yaroslav Honzik. That is the opportunity that Keithy was waiting for. It's the opportunity that the Czech driver has been waiting for. And will this see Yaroslav Honzik through into P2 as we head onto the back straight? It does initially, though they're side by side going onto this final lap. Santos ever so slightly now pulls on ahead. And we have seen multiple times how good the brakes are on that German's car into turn one we go then and he is going to remain on the inside he is going to remain in p2 but he's going to be a little bit flustered by that rob and if he is able to close to the back of keithy by the time we hit the ngk chicane i wouldn't be surprised if he does try and send it a little bit more forcefully than he did previously and he's already back on the on the rear of keithy's car so mm. he hasn't lost his composure there that was a close scene that could have ended a lot worse than it did than it actually did so now, um, Andre Santos, he will try everything. We are on the final lap. And there are not a lot of opportunities left for the German driver to secure the win here. He's got to send it. If he wants a chance to win, he's got to send it. But that, he's got a great exit, Keith, hasn't he? He saved it all for this last little bit. And Santos, I mean, he's got to pull the outbreaking of outbreakings if he's wanting to get there. No, it isn't enough. Perhaps it was never enough. Jack Keefe then. He defends staunchly. I'm sure Santos will be a little bit upset himself. But as they cross the line, it will be Jack Keefe who picks up his third win of the season. Santos comes home second ahead of Yaroslav Honzik who picks up his first podium of the season. Would you believe it's his first podium outside of that win which he took? 
pretty much a year ago. They're followed home by Manuels and Gaffin, and brilliant drive from the Swiss driver. Ben Spunky, uh, Andika Ram Maulana, Julians and Gaffin scoring points along with Johannes Weiss in P8. Emre Sheehan picks up a couple of points in P9, and it'll be Fenric uh, Seguir who picks up the final point in P10, beating out our two guys that were looking to score a point, Mikael Reichel and Lucas Buron. But Jack Keithley, he led from pole to finish, but he had to work hard for it, Rob. Maybe a little bit over the line, some would say. Yeah, that was close, but I think for Andre Santos, it doesn't matter so much in the end because he has secured his ticket for the final event. A fantastic job by Andre Santos as well. And first podium this year, yeah, for Jaroslav Honsik, for the Czech driver. So what a great race it was for the Czechs. And Gaffin and strong performance as well. And for Ben Spunky, we will do the calculations and see if he still has a theoretical chance. But this was not the race that he needed this time out. Well, so Banky picks up end points. And so that puts him on to 49 so 69 74 it's not enough so that means it's not qualified as well and there you have it yeah we have our six going to the live land final at the hockenheim ring kevin siggy rebenak from slovakia uh yeah no sorry from Slovenia, no. I think he is. From Slovenia. I get confused because I call him the Austro-Slovenian because he is Austro-Slovenian, but his flag is Slovenian. There we go. Got it all out in the end. And Dika Ramamalana from Indonesia. Jack Keithley from Great Britain. And from Germany, three representatives in the end. Julian Kunzer, Andre Santos, and Tim Heinemann. It was a strong effort by Jaroslav Honzik to try and stay uh, stick with that pack in the end. But Rob, Andre Santos... He did his work early season. He picked up that win at Brands Hatch. He's now picked up his second podium of the season, making it matter when it counted most. Yes, and of course, we still have one race coming up in the online mm. season. Everything might be decided, but there will still be one more round of racing action. And you can qualify as well. You can try out the cars. You can join for free. It's absolutely free. It costs you absolutely nothing. You do not need to buy the game or so. You just need to download Race Room and join the competition. And then you can try to qualify for the last race, which is at the uh, Red Bull Ring. Actually, that yep. is the wrong scene. So this one, this one is what we needed. There we have yes. the Red Bull <laughs> Ring. So the qualifying still open until the 19th. And then we have the multiplayer race on the 23rd. And of course, we have with that final round on the calendar, our final change in the car as we take this tour through Mercedes touring car history. It's the 2015 C63. It's got a lot of downforce. It's got a lot of speed, but more importantly, Rob, it's got DRS and it might pave the way for a, for one final winner, perhaps in the competition. We still have yet to see, of course, if any of these drivers are going to turn up once again for pride. Yeah, I think uh, we will see a lot of drivers. Julian Kunze, he said he's going to turn up. I think Tim Heinemann will be turning up as well because they need to practice, of course, for the final, mm. which will be run at Hockenheim, where th our six e-racers will compete against the six Mercedes-AMG DTM drivers. There's a lot to look forward to. Yes, there, is there is a lot to look forward to. Uh, and it all begins, of course, on the 23rd of September when we head to the final round, round nine of nine. It has been... A brilliant season, and I'm sure it's going to round itself out in brilliant fashion. Join us then in two weeks' time as we close out this tour through history. Massive thank you to Rob Wiesenmuller, as always, bringing you the pictures, bringing you the brilliant color analysis. I've been James Kirk, and from all of us here, it is a very warm goodbye.